The UK's Vulcan laser entered the Guinness Book of World Records in 2004 as the highest intensity focused laser in the world. It's capable of producing intensities of up to 10 to the 21 watts per square centimeter. That's a zettawatt per square centimeter for any SI prefix enthusiasts out there. In intensity terms, it's equivalent to all the sunshine on Earth focused down to the end of a human hair. Kate Lancaster is a plasma physicist on the Vulcan project. Kate, can you tell us a bit more about this project and how it works? Sure. Well, um, you can take the laser beam and you can focus it down to something like 5 microns. And at that point, the intensity is about 10 to the 21 watts per square centimetre, as you said before. Now, at that point, the laser imparts energy to the atoms. And essentially what happens is a process of ionisation where um, electrons can escape the atom. So what you're left with is um, ions and electrons, essentially. And the combination of those two um, sets of particles is called plasma. So essentially what we do is plasma physics and ex extreme materials science at high temperatures. So, you know, it's really very exciting sort of science that you can do with a laser of that intensity. What's your specific role on Vulcan? So part of the time I'm actually um, scheduled to be a researcher on the laser. So um, applying for time just like other university users and conducting my research, which is mainly um, surrounding fusion energy research. Um, the other part of my job is actually to facilitate users who come in to plan their experiments and to help them execute them at the time when they come in at the point of access. Um, and I also, part of my time I spend going and talking to the general public and um, enthusing them about the wonders of lasers and fusion energy. So. Mm -hmm. What other sorts of experiments besides fusion do, uh, you does Vulcan work on? Well, you can do anything from uh, miniaturising particle accelerators to um, miniaturising uh, the, the sort of universal scales. So we can do sort of laboratory astrophysics. Um, a lot of the work is actually surrounding fusion energy and um, understanding the way laser energy is actually imparted to materials. Okay. So Vulcan's been around for some time, since the 1980s, but it's had a series of upgrades since then. What have been the most recent changes and what can you do as a result of these upgrades? We actually made some changes in order for us to be able to do some fusion energy investigations. Uh, one of, in one of the target areas, the current setup is there are six long pulse beams entering the area. And the long pulse is a, a nanosecond, so that's a billionth of a second. And previously, it was in combination with one short pulse beam, which is a picosecond in length. But in order to do better fusion energy studies, we actually needed a second beam of higher energy in combination with those sets of lasers. So we've, we've actually implemented those changes, and that's had a direct effect on laser fusion projects at the moment. So, so is Vulcan still the record holder? Is that uh, title passed to another facility? Well, we've been world leader since 2002, but a few labs have actually caught up with us now. So um, we're just about to switch on a machine called Gemini, which is going to take us a factor of 10 in the lead in intensity. And then in the future, we're going to actually upgrade Vulcan. Well, we plan to upgrade Vulcan from one petawatt to, to 10 petawatts. What can you do with 10 petawatts that you can't do with one petawatt? Well, it kind of opens up a whole new intensity regime. So we may be able to access physical regimes where it will allow us to do, uh, say, quantum electrodynamics, um, accelerate particles to much higher energies, and maybe some exotic nuclear physics as well. So yeah, it's going to be a really exciting machine for the future. OK. Looking to the future, on a more personal note, what do you see as the most exciting or rewarding aspect of your work? Well, um, I've been working on one laser fusion scheme for, for the last eight years. Um, when I was doing my PhD, that's what it was based upon. Um, and at that time, eight years ago, it wasn't taken particularly seriously. But actually now, eight years later, with the, these big fusion projects actually uh, coming online, people are really sitting up and taking notice. And it feels like a real vindication of the kind of work I've been doing over the last eight years. So I think for me, it'd be really exciting to see uh, these large fusion laser machines coming into fruition. So. Kate Lancaster, thanks for your time. No problem.